In this movie, we're actually going to be adjusting temporal interpolation. We're going to be doing that through a quick and easy process called easing. I have here this easing project. You'll find the chapter 13 folder. And essentially, this rocket ship just goes from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Two keyframes here. Nothing changed from the default. Just set a keyframe here. Hit end. Set a keyframe here. That's it. Now, this type of interpolation, which is the default interpolation, is referred to as linear. Basically, what that means is that the velocity is linear or constant. Now, what I want to do is duplicate this rocket and move the copy down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer, and I'm going to use Command-D or Control-D on the PC to duplicate this layer. Now, here's the rub. When we select the duplicate, basically they're the same thing, so either one's a duplicate. Uh, as I click and drag this downwards, I'm actually creating a new keyframe. So we have a little jump here, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to undo that. So here's how we adjust multiple keyframes of the same property. I'm going to hit the Home key. And we need to check our keyframe navigator over here on the left-hand side to make sure that we're actually on a frame with the keyframe. That's step one. Second step is we need to have all keyframes selected. We do that by clicking on the name of the property. So once you have those two conditions met, where you are actually on a frame with the keyframe and you have all keyframes selected, then you can move an animation. I'm just going to hold shift while I drag to make sure that we stay directly below this here. As soon as I let go of the mouse, we will have moved our duplicate without adding any keyframes. Now let's apply easing to one of the keyframes. I'm going to select the first keyframe, right click on it, go to keyframe assistant down at the bottom, and select easy ease out. What this will do is it will cause the rocket to leave more slowly, but it still has to get to the next keyframe at the same time as the other rocket. So what it's going to do is it's going to leave more slowly and then accelerate quickly at the end. And you can see these dots. Again, these dots represent the speed of the object as we zoom in here. And as we zoom in and look at this, you can see that these dots are farther apart at the end than they are at the beginning. So as the frames are farther apart, that indicates faster motion because the jet has to go farther from frame to frame. And like the beginning here, when these dots are closer together, it indicates a slow velocity because it doesn't have very far to travel from frame to frame. Also notice that the shape of our keyframe changed. These diamonds we've been seeing so far just indicate that we've created a keyframe with linear interpolation. And now this half an hour glass that we're seeing indicates that the motion is not constant. So let me zoom out and we'll look at these two jets and tell the difference between them. Very obvious when you play them next to each other. The first jet obviously leaves much slower and then goes very quickly at the end. But again, they start and end at the exact same spot, the exact same time. Well, other than the fact that the copy is a little bit lower, of course. And so this easing is basically given more life to this rocket. This is how the rocket would work in real life. It wouldn't just start launching at full speed. It would take a while to get there. Now let's go back and select the original again. And let's go ahead and hit Command D to duplicate that one more time. Now I'm going to rename these layers. This one that we've added easing to, I'm going to hit the enter key on or the return key on the Mac, and I'm going to type easy ease out, just to remember what that one is. And on our original at the top, I'm also going to hit enter again, and I'm going to type original, just to remember what that one's for. Now the duplicate we've just created, I'm going to rename this easy ease in. And I'm going to press the U key to show all keyframes. And making sure that we're on a frame with the keyframe, I'm going to click position to select all of its keyframes and drag this down while holding the shift key so we can see all three of these little rockets right next to each other. And I'm going to click away to deselect them. And this time we're going to show you another automatic form of easing. We're going to talk about easy ease in. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to right click on this keyframe, the end keyframe. And I'm going to go to keyframe assistant. This time I'm going to select easy ease in. This will cause the slowdown to happen at the end so that basically the easing goes into the next keyframe. Picture a car coming to a stop. Cars, just like most things in the real world, gradually come to a stop. And that's what Easy Ease In does. So as we play these together, we can see that it has to speed up at the beginning in order to be able to slow down at the end and still meet at the same keyframe at the end. So we have a gradual slowdown until it finally stops. 
Now what we could also do is combine them. I could right click on the first keyframe, go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease out. So we're getting slower motion out of the first keyframe and slower motion into the last keyframe. And so because of that, it's gonna to have to go very fast through the middle. So let's hit the home key and preview what this looks like. So we start slow, we go fast in the middle, and we go gradually slow at the end. Easing is a subtle thing, but it makes a difference in the way an animation feels. You look at an animation that has linear interpolation and it just feels robotic and fake. And actually robotic is a bad way to describe it because even robots move with easing. They start slow and then they end slow. Now you shouldn't just automatically use easing on everything. Let's say for example a stopwatch. That's pretty linear animation. It's just very constant. But again with most things in the real world you'll want to apply a little bit of easing. If you want to enhance this or fine tune this animation, you'll need to use the graph editor, which we'll look at, at the end of this chapter. In the next few movies, we're going to look at some great helpers to create some more advanced animation.